Jane, Robin, and Gloria were sitting at a table at a conference complaining about the media. And we thought, as organizers, each one of us, that it was high time we did something about it. I'd been lusting after something like the Women's Media Center for decades, and so had Gloria. And we were all talking about how difficult it was to get any coverage for the issues that we were working on, and that we just felt like we were blocked. Jane, with her remarkable posture, sat bolt upright, which was difficult since she was already sitting bolt upright. She sat more bolted upright and said, well, let's just do it. I remembered when I first became an activist, it was 1970. I had gone from Barbarella to standing on sidewalks and platforms speaking to five or 5,000, 500,000 people about why the war was wrong. And I, I didn't know how to do it. I was rhetorical, I was shrill, I didn't know how to come from my core place in a way that could be more, you know, more persuasive. And I thought, oh God, if I had been able to be trained to speak from, from my woman place, that would have changed everything. And I thought, let's do it, let's just do it. Gloria and I looked at each other and looked at Jane, and Jane said, I'm going to plunk down a sum of money and, and we'll see who will match it and we'll get it started. And that's how it got started. Um, and we haven't had a chance to wash our hair since. And then I arrive in this very apartment to find in the corner Jane Fonda with like a skull cap on, you know, and her checkbook out, uh, and uh, Gloria and Robin and Pat Mitchell. and a group of uh, some of the most powerful women in this city, in media, uh, talking about uh, the crisis that existed. And that day, we, we didn't know quite what it would be, but we decided we'd make an advocacy voice at least. And then the fun began. <laughs> I was speaking on the phone with Gloria Steinem, and she mentioned that they were starting this center and that they were looking for space in New York City. I had my office in the Empire State Building, and Bonnie calls me up one day and she says, you got some extra space back there, huh? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I got some people that have started the Women's Media Center, and it's very, very important, and they need some office space, so would you mind giving them some space? I said, of course, of course, you know, for you. I mean, if, if it's something that you think is really important and we have the space, why not? How much are they going to pay in rent? <laughs> They're going to pay nothing. <laughs> I, said, I guess it must be really, really important. <laughs> Would you not have immediately been thrilled to hear from Carol Jenkins? Well, Gloria Steinem called. What could I say? And Robin uh, approached me and talked to me about the Women's Media Center. I was like, yes, this is exactly what we need. I got involved in the Women's Media Center because Jane Fonda asked me. Gloria mentioned to me, I said, Gloria, this is just perfect. I'll support anything that Gloria and Jane Fonda and Robin Morgan support, I support. It, it was just a really important mission and I really wanted to support that. If we just go along and pretend like everything's fine, then everybody will think everything's fine and it's not. Along comes you know, some of the most preeminent, amazing women um, in media in the country wanting to give of their collective wisdom and experience and talents in a way that I thought, this just can never happen. You can't buy this, you can't find this. And I had to step up. The mission of the Women's Media Center is unbelievably important. It is to give voice to women in, on the single most important platform in the world, media. We live in such a mediated society that if you're not getting to tell your own story and define your own terms, you know, somebody else is defining you in a way you might not want to be defined. And that's exactly what has been happening with women in the media since the media began. We saw that it, we could make a difference. And it was sitting right in front of us when we turned on our television screen. We are more than 50% of the population. We have to have more than 50% of the vo voice. And demand that there be diversity in what you see and what you hear, and that women be presented to you as opinion makers. The media monitoring we did around women running for office, 
it didn't just answer the story of sexism in the media. It answered the story about why women don't run for office. It was a heyday of sexist comments, and, and everyone was kind of accepting it. When you put it together the way the Women's Media Center did, it's, you realize this is horrendous. This is inhuman. This is impossible. This can't be happening in the 21st century of the United States. And yet it did. Okay, so name it, change it. You literally can name it, and we together can change it. You know, name it, change it. Name It, Change It is a unique program that holds the media accountable for treating women in politics fairly. If you see something that is degrading or harmful or in any way just does not reflect the world for women, the world for girls, contact the Women's Media Center. The Women's Media Center needs all our voices. The collective voice gets louder, stronger, harder to ignore. If all those different realities in a chorus are brought to bear, wow, that's a very different sound. Our goal for tonight is to uh, get to know each other, become a activist group, meet people we haven't met, and become a center of energy and support that will transform the media for years to come. If you're waiting for an invitation to participate in the Women's Media Center, consider this your personal invitation. <laughs>